Network attached storage devices are great for storing large amounts of data that can be easily accessed across your entire home network. But how exactly do they work? We'll discuss this in today's video as well as why you may benefit more from using a NAS over relying on cloud-based storage solutions. Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Home Network Geek, where we talk about everything home networking. If you enjoy the video and you find it helpful, it'd be great if you could drop it a like and also subscribe to the channel. Now let's jump straight in with what a NAS even is. A NAS can be considered to be a self-contained computer that is connected to your home network. Its sole purpose is to make data that's stored on it available to the other devices that are connected to your network. Although it may be possible to run other pieces of software, a NAS isn't designed to perform tasks that you would typically perform on a regular computer or laptop. In fact, many NAS devices won't even allow you to connect an external monitor or a keyboard or mouse to them. They are both configured and controlled over the network, usually accessed by typing the IP address of the NAS into your web browser. A NAS sits somewhere between your basic external hard drive and a fully fledged cloud-based storage system. Now, although it is possible to connect to a NAS through a regular USB cable, you won't be taking advantage of what a NAS offers over your regular external hard drive, which is the network itself. A NAS can be considered to form its own mini network, only allowing those with the correct username and password to access it. The NAS will connect to your home network via the router itself, or a network switch if you decide to use one. And just like all the other devices on your network, the NAS will be allocated an IP address by the router, allowing you to access it. Once you have set up and configured your NAS, it's really as simple as browsing to its IP address through your operating system's file explorer. If you have decided to require authentication to access your NAS, which is highly recommended by the way, you'll be prompted for the username and password at this stage. Once authenticated, you'll have connectivity to the NAS and have access to all of the files that are stored on it. A typical NAS that you and I would use in the home network will have between one and four hard drive bays used to house hard drives themselves, but some can have as many as eight bays. This makes them ideal if you want to store particularly large amounts of data or want to set up some advanced redundancy. The main reason to include a NAS as part of your home network setup is to provide a centralized location to store all of your files. But there are alternatives out there that can work out to be considerably cheaper than a NAS while still providing a shared storage location on a home network. An example being that you can plug a USB hard drive into the USB port of your router. So why would you want to consider a NAS over this very simple solution? When you have an external hard drive connected to your router, you'll be limited by the speed in which the router can read and write to the hard drive. The USB port found on a router isn't actually needed for the router itself to function, so little time, money and effort is put into making it an efficient device. And this is the case on even the most high-end routers. Most routers will have slow read and write times of around 13 megabytes per second, so you'll be asking quite a lot of it, especially if you're trying to perform intense tasks like streaming high quality video. This is made even worse when you have multiple devices looking to access the data at the same time. A NAS on the other hand is designed specifically for simultaneous use. So if you're looking to stream a video, someone else in the household shouldn't have an issue if they're looking to back up their photos for example. Having a NAS simply provides much greater storage options than relying on a simple USB external hard drive. A NAS will typically have multiple hard drive bays to support multiple hard drives whereas the router will typically only have one USB port, so only one hard drive can be connected. You also have the ability to set up redundancy with a NAS, so if one hard drive were to fail, for example, you can simply remove that, replace it, and all the data that's been stored on one of the other hard drives will automatically mirror over to the new hard drive. Having a NAS also allows you to access your files from wherever you may be in the world. Providing the remote access feature is enabled, you can access the NAS and all of the files on it without having to be connected to your home network. It's almost like having your own personal cloud storage. In addition to these benefits, there are a few reasons as to why you may want to consider a NAS over a cloud-based storage system. You may find that the files you wish to store in the cloud are simply too large for it to be used as an efficient storage solution. Photos and videos are common files that many people want to store in the cloud but unfortunately are some of the largest as well. It isn't uncommon for a very short piece of 4K video footage to be many gigabytes in size. You may soon find yourself reaching the limits of your cloud storage 
without actually having stored that many files. It will then require you to invest more money into a plan that provides greater storage or find somewhere else to store your files. You are then back to square one in that you have your data stored in multiple locations, making it more difficult to manage. Unlike a NAS, which requires a one-off payment for the NAS itself and a few hard drives, a cloud system will often require a monthly fee. Now, how much this is will depend on the system that you use and how much storage you require. Some services like Google Drive will provide a small amount of storage for free, which is really handy if you just have a few documents or maybe a few photos to store. Depending on the types of files you're looking to store, you could quickly find that you reach this limit and have to purchase a new plan. Now, five or $10 a month may not seem like much, and it may provide you with more storage than you'll ever need, but consider that cost over several years. With a NAS, you purchase everything at once and then don't have to worry about investing more money into data storage. This is, of course, unless you decide you want to purchase additional hard drives for your NAS or have to replace ones that have gone faulty. But typically, these hard drives don't cost the earth. With a NAS, it's possible and actually very easy to set up what's known as redundancy. This involves using two or more hard drives to mirror each other. So any data that's stored on hard drive A will automatically mirror to hard drive B. Redundancy essentially allows for a live instant backup to take place, which is one of the major benefits of using a NAS. Should one hard drive in a NAS fail for whatever reason, all of the data can still be accessed as if nothing had ever happened. When you have the replacement drive, simply insert it into the NAS and all of the data will start to mirror again automatically. Now, of course, you will need multiple hard drives in order to set up redundancy with your NAS, but I would recommend the investment. Not only are the hard drives relatively affordable to buy, but to have peace of mind that all of your data is safe, even if a hard drive fails, is worth it in my opinion. Files stored on a NAS can be accessed much quicker than those stored in the cloud. And the reason for this is how they are accessed. The NAS itself is connected to your home network and therefore doesn't require a connection to the internet to access the files. This also means you're not limited by your download and upload speeds, which can often be the bottleneck when using cloud storage. And whilst you're sitting there waiting for a large file to download from the cloud, you are consuming bandwidth. Now, whilst you're doing this, this could affect other members of the family, like those that are looking to stream Netflix, for example. They could find their streaming buffers while you're trying to download your files. Files stored on the NAS are on your home network, not the internet, so this won't be a problem. So a NAS is a device that's connected to your home network with the purpose of providing a centralized storage location for all of your files. They work by creating their own mini network, which can only be accessed if you know the IP address, the correct username, and the correct password. They offer several benefits over simple storage solutions like an external hard drive, as well as cloud-based storage systems. If you're serious about storing large amounts of data in a central and easy to access location, you may want to consider adding a NAS to your home network. I'll leave links to some of my favorites in the description box below, as well as another link to my recommended gear page where you'll find all other sorts of networking hardware. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you did, it'd be great if you drop it like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those notifications while you're there. And don't forget to head on over to homenetworkgeek.com where we've got a ton of articles on everything home networking. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.